Hello guys, uh, welcome back to my channel, Maison African Motives, uh, still working on Mets N2. So in this case, uh, we shall be focusing actually on graphs, uh, which is uh, one of the topics that uh, most of us actually don't uh, like focus much on it. But uh, you will see that uh, there are some more questions uh, actually like uh, more marks that you can achieve uh, from this part of knowing the graphs. Okay, so the first part of graph that we have is the, the straight line graph. Uh, that is the one that you're going to talk about in this uh, class. So guys, if you're new to this channel, uh, you can consider subscribing so that you become part of the family to enjoy more classes to come from Maison African Motives. So we shall quickly rush through uh, this part I'm talking about, uh, which is on graphs there. So like I said, we are going to be focusing on the straight line graph. All right. So this graph that we are talking about, which is uh, the straight line graph, it has got uh, some properties that it has that you need uh, to know on this uh, straight line graph, actually. Okay, when you are talking or when you are repre representing a, a graphical part, I'm going to explain the basics. Uh, then from this basic, you understand me, actually, what I'm trying to say here. Let's say we have got um, this X, uh, it's actually called a Cartesian plane, this part that I'm drawing here, where you draw your graph, you have got the X axis and you have got the Y axis like this, X axis, Y axis like this, X axis, then Y axis, all right? These are the properties which gives us what we refer to as a Cartesian plane. So this is a Cartesian plane. That's a Cartesian plane. All right. I hope you understand these terms. So what happens is that um, we can draw actually a lot of functions or a lot of graphs from on this Cartesian plane. So the first type of graph that we can have is a straight line, which is uh, typically something like this, guys. We are just referring to something like this that's a straight line all right so if this be the origin here this is the origin which is a point zero zero and there is a point here which lies on the graph in the point which lies on the graph another point another point so a straight line graph can actually be drawn from points that lies on the graph so i'm going to explain much about this graph later on but for the meantime I want us to know what is this straight line okay this straight line that we are talking about it's uh, represented or can be represented in this format y is equal to mx plus c which is the general format so this format that we are talking about which represents uh, the format of a straight line y is equal to mx plus c this m here that we are seeing it represents the gradient so m represents the gradient all right and this c that we are seeing here and its sign is representing what we refer to as the y intercept so that's your y intercept you're supposed to know this property so you've got y is equal to mx plus c and m represents the gradient uh, c represents the y intercept so it's very very important that you know the general format of a straight line why because they can give us a condition uh, let's just talk about these guys uh, let's just talk about some few examples here y is equal to 3x plus 4 you can be asked to state the gradient there and also to give the y intercept okay so what is our gradient the gradient in this case is this number that is affecting x, not x, but the year. just like here, guys, we said m is the one that is representing gradient, not x. So the part that is multiplying x is the one which is your gradient, not x, okay? So it's not 3x, but it's 3. So in this case, our gradient, uh, which is m in actual sense is equal to 3 okay then this is number as it is that's your y-intercept so the y-intercept 
in this case is equivalent to 4 so that's how you determine from the from this format okay so now because of uh, the properties and so forth what they need they can uh, ask you to express this uh, this is the first typical part we shall talk about others as we move on but the first typical part of a question that you can have is this one on 7.2 where we are asked to express each of the following linear equations in a standard form then determine the gradient and the y-intercept okay which is the same thing on number two they complete the following table as you can see this is a linear equation then the standard form which is the general form that we talked about which is y is equal to mx plus c then gradient m y intercept which is the c value so as you can see this question on number two is the same question as the one that we had on number one so these are the questions that you can have there all right so that's a uh, typical questions and sometimes you might be given the gradient and to write the equation like that right so i'll talk about this type of equation in later part all right so as we saw the first question was to express uh, the following linear equations in the standard form. so we want to represent these linear equations in a standard form which is y is equal to mx plus c which is the general form of y is equal to mx plus c so how can we write this in the general form or the standard form of y is equal to mx plus c they simply want you to make y to be the subject so it must be used to transposing uh, or changing of subject or formula where you have to make y to be the subject okay so what can i do in this case okay i've got one option or two options actually i can decide to transpose these three to this side of the equation so which means i'm going to be left with minus y take note there's a minus there so it's going to be minus y is equal to since i'm supposed to write x i'm going to start with x so this three x to the right hand side it will be a minus so it will be minus 3x then already the constant was already there which is 6 and it's a plus so it's going to be plus 6 all right but still it's not y this one is minus y and i need to make y a positive this is a positive term so how can i make this a positive i have to divide by negative 1 throughout by negative 1 by negative throughout so the moment I divide by a negative, I'm going to be left with a positive y like this, which is equal to negative and negative. I'm going to be left with positive 3x, positive and negative. I'm going to be left with negative 6. So I have the standard form of the equation, which is y is equal to mx plus c. So what is my gradient? So the gradient, which is m, is this part, which is equal to 3. The coefficient of what? of x and the c which is the y intercept in this case the y intercept is minus six so your y intercept in this case is minus six the gradient is three so like i said we could have done this in two options we could have just transposed minus y instead of transposing uh because this one is a negative so i could have taken this so that it becomes a positive so I'm going to be left with 3x and transpose 6 to this side is going to be minus 6, which is equal to y. So as you can see, just like a is equal to b, b is equal to a. It's one and the same thing. So if 3x minus 6 is equal to y, it also means y is equal to 3x minus 6. So that was another way of transposing. Still, I'm obtaining the same answer as this one. Then I determine my gradient and my y intercept so that is the condition that we had so this was actually uh, number one from the first question uh, this was number one a all right so let's try something there as you can see those questions they are simply the same maybe you can just try number one c and we move on to another part so on number one c we had something like this 6x is equal to uh, that's positive 4y like this e plus 3 okay so we still need to write in the standard form y is equal to mx plus c all right what can we do in this case still we've got the same option we've got two ways of doing it um, i can decide 
since I want to make y, I can decide to transpose this y to the left hand side. So it's going to be minus 4y because it's a positive. So it will be minus 4y is equal to 6x to the right hand side because we are supposed to have it on the right hand side, which is a negative now because it was a positive. So it will be minus 6x. Already I had a plus 3, so it's not going to change. So it's going to be like plus 3 like that, okay? But as you can see, y is not the subject there. This is minus 4y. So what am I supposed to do? I divide by minus 4 or throughout, by minus 4, throughout, by minus 4, throughout, like that. Each and every term. So the moment you divide each and every term by minus 4, which means you're going to be left with 1 there, which is 1y like this. The moment you write 1y is same as what? It is the same as y, so there's no need of you writing as 1y there, okay? Simplify this from your calculator, minus 6 over minus 4, you're going to obtain positive 3 over 2x, okay? Simplify this again from your calculator, plus 3 over minus 4, you're going to obtain minus 3 over 4. So that's, the, that's it, guys, as you can see. We now have this format here y is equal to mx plus c so our m is the gradient which is our m in this case is this value 3 over 2 so 3 over 2 becomes your gradient in this case that's 3 over 2 or 1,5 or 1 and a half depending on the way that you want to write it and the y-intercept becomes uh, negative 3 over 4 that's your y-intercept there Okay, so like I said, we had two ways of doing this. We could have just left this for y because it's already a positive here. So you could have transposed instead of uh, transposing uh, the way that we did this y. Since it is a positive, I, I can just leave it on this side and transpose 3 to this side. So it's going to be 6x minus 3 is equal to 4y like this. But since I want y, so I'm going to divide by 4 each and every term, each and every term by 4. So the moment I do this, I'm left with y is equal to this 2 divide is going to give me 3 over 2x. This is already minus 3 over 4. So as you can see, we are obtaining the same equation just like the one who did another way of transposing. As still, you have got the general form and you've got uh, the, the equation there, uh, which is the gradient you can find it from there. So as you can see, that's it, guys. Okay, well, number two, it was a table which had uh, the equation and so forth. So there is simply one and the same thing. Also, I'm just going to take uh, number 2H there, where we were given that is minus Y minus X is equal to 2. So there you're asked to have the standard form of Y is equal to MX plus C sorry, y is equal to mx plus c, then gradient and y intercepts. As you can see, it's one and the same thing. So the standard form is the equation, make y the subject. So minus y is equal to, we transpose this so that it becomes positive x plus 2. Already there was a plus 2 there. Take note, guys, we are back to this minus. So to remove this, divide by minus 1, by minus 1, by minus 1. So this is going to be positive y. Here it's like we've got a positive, so it's a positive and a negative that is going to give you a negative, positive and negative and negative again. All right, so what is going to be our gradient in this case? So gradient, as you can see, this is minus x, which means the number that is multiplying is minus 1. So that's your gradient. And your y-intercept in this case is minus 2. So that's how you determine these guys. All right, so let's move on to another piece of work that we can uh, be given. And uh, how do you actually work with that uh, type of a question or format uh, on a condition, uh, the way that you'll be given? All right. From a straight line, this gradient actually can be determined maybe they are points that you are given all right you are given a point uh, points from the graph 
you can actually determine what we refer to as the gradient. So what do we refer as to as the gradient? The gradient is actually a change in y over a change in x, just like a, an increase in y over an increase in x. So given two points now, which is x1 and y1 like this, and so we are, let's just say given, okay, x1, y1, and x2, y2, which is another point. Therefore, the gradient is given by the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this becomes the formula to determine the gradient. So how, how, how is it this important? Uh, what, what, what's so important about this gradient that we are talking about that they can give you points just to calculate this gradient. Just like uh, on this part here, uh, I'm just focusing on the gradient first here. Calculate the gradient there. Calculate the gradient using the formula m is equal to y2 minus, which is the gradient. Okay, so you're given the points there. Then you're also asked to calculate the gradient uh, from the graphs. So I will talk about that one uh, later on. But what I want you is to understand how to just calculate gradient given points there okay so we are asked to use this formula we remember i said gradient represents m so m is equal to or gradient is equal to it's the one and the same thing okay so let's just take uh, two points there on one c we are given two points uh that's one two and negative three four all right, so these are the two points that you're given and you want to calculate the gradient, which is equal to m. So m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this becomes your x1, your x2, your y1, your y2 like that. All right, so sorry, that's x1, y1. What am I doing here? Yes, I hope someone saw this x2, y2. Yeah, something like that. So take note guys, this is the first point. This is the second point. So this is one, one, like X and Y because a point is given in terms of X and Y like this, all right? So guys, let's substitute Y2. That's your Y2 here, which is your Y2 is four. So your Y2 in this case, that's a four here, minus uh, Y1, which is a two over x2 our x2 in this case the one that corresponds to x this one minus 3 minus x1 this is your x1 which is a 1 all right so there you can just uh use your calculator direct if you are capable of doing that uh, but just put your fraction there or you can just simplify one one or i don't know the way that is simpler to you but using a calculator, you just put a fraction like this, then uh, it's 4 minus, so that's 4, minus 2 over minus 3. This is the minus that you put this one here, this minus here, this minus. All right, so it's minus 3. Then you subtract using this minus here, okay, this minus, so it's minus 1. Okay, you're going to obtain minus half. So that is the gradient that you're going to obtain, which is a minus half. So that was the question. Just to calculate the gradient, guys, uh, nothing much. Nothing much about this. So that's what you simply want there. And uh, then the, these two properties actually maybe you're given. Uh, let's just talk about these properties so that I can explain what I want to explain. Okay, we've uh, given parallelized. So for parallels, there's nothing important that you you have. Uh, remember, these are lines that uh, like this, the lines which will never meet. They maintain a certain distance in between them. So what are the properties of these uh, parallel lines, or what do we know for these parallel lines? For parallel lines, if this is line one and this is line two, these are the two lines that we're talking about. The gradients of these lines are equal. So M1 is equal to M2 where m remember it represents gradient so this is gradient of the first line of the first line and this is gradient of the second line so we are saying that the gradient of the first line is equal to the gradient of the second line 
all right that's a, a second there let's just put it like this second line so that it can be easier for us so when you are given such a condition guys you must know that parallel lines their gradient is actually the same all right then uh, what else which properties do we know uh, or do we are we supposed to know you're supposed to know for perpendicular uh, perpendicular lines what are these perpendicular lines these are lines actually which meet at 90 degrees like this you are given a line and another line so this is your first line and this is your second line these two lines they meet at 90 degrees that's being perpendicular so for these ones the product of the gradients of the first line to the product of the gradient of the second line should give us minus one okay so the product of the first line in terms of gradient and the gradient of the second line if you multiply the gradients together you are going to obtain negative one if the lines are perpendicular okay so that's a concept what you just need to know or to understand we talk about this in in examples and so forth all right so the most important part now that we want to talk about is a condition where you are supposed to draw or to sketch a straight line how do i uh, how am i supposed to do this how can i draw or how can i sketch a straight line all right the concept is uh, when you are given a straight line actually you were supposed to use uh, the many methods that you actually is supposed to use you are supposed to use what is referred as the table of values which is tov or you can actually use what is referred as the double intercept this is the one that you are going to talk about uh, in this case the table of values is a, is a method that we you substitute the values of x to obtain the values of y so that you can draw a line okay it's fine like that but in exam guys you can actually use this simpler thing remember when i introduced you to a straight line here i want you to cross check here this is our straight line guys there something that is happening here do you notice that if you only have this if you are given this point here and this point let's say these are the only points that you are given do you know that you can draw a straight line because to draw a straight line is simply a matter of joining the points you're done so if this is the matter that we can use it means i'm supposed to find those points now in order for me to have a straight line so how do i determine the points okay i'm just gonna do a sketch here and explain what i want to explain here we've got x and y and this is our line all right this point here it is it represents what is called the x intercept the point which lies in the x axis remember this is the x axis so the point which lies in the x axis is called the x intercept and it's on a condition where y is equal to zero so in the x axis y is equal to zero this is the axis for x y at that moment is equal to zero this is the y axis this point here is the y intercept all right that's your y intercept and in the y axis x is equal to x is equal to zero so this can help me now to determine these points because the moment i know that uh, at this point here y is equal to zero which means i'm supposed to determine the value of x but y at that moment is equal to zero remember that a point is written like this is how you write a point or a coordinate it's x y like this so here we are going to find the value of x which we do not know but y is a certain value that y is equal to zero because we are in the x axis where y is equal to to zero in the y intercept is the same thing the value of x is a zero so we are going to substitute our x with a zero then you find the value of y like that so which means when you've got two points like that it's easier for you to draw a straight line so this is it guys um on drawing 
uh, the straight line so I'm just gonna do a uh, few sketch here so that we can move on guys sorry for that I hope it's gonna be clear here draw uh, sketch graphs of these are the graphs that you are given there so I'm just gonna rush through there and write down the equations of the following lines that's another concept there so I want us to focus on this part which is to draw all right so how am I going to draw sorry this thing has moved my part here uh, let's start with this B. I'm going to explain another one first, uh, but I want you to focus on that B where we are given Y is equal to minus X plus 2. All right. You want to draw that line, a sketch of this line. You know that this is a straight line. So how do you know that this is a straight line? The highest exponent is 1 throughout and also from the format here, Y is equal to MX plus C. Okay. So in order for me to sketch this line, I need to find the x-intercept. All right, you are going to determine the x-intercept. Remember, the x-intercept, y is equal to 0. So if y is equal to 0, you are going to find the value of x. So let's find the value of x. What, what am I going to do? I simply substitute into this equation. So in this equation, in place of y, I'm going to substitute a 0 here in place of y. So 0 is equal to, this part remains as it is. So it's minus x plus 2 like this. All right. So what is the value of x? I'm going to solve the equation. Transpose minus x to the right hand side is a positive x. So x is equal to 2. But remember, guys, this is a point which is written in terms of x and y like this. So x is 2. So x here is 2, y at this moment, remember, it's on a condition where y is equal to what? Where y is equal to 0. Okay, so we've got our x intercept. Okay, let's find y intercept. So you've got y intercept here. So on the y intercept, you're talking about a condition where x is equal to what? Where x is equal to 0. All right, so we are going to have y is equal this time. You substitute this value of x. We are going to replace this x in place of x here. So it's minus 0 plus 2. Guys, this is going to give you a 2, okay? Any number plus 0, guys, that's it, 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 remain, it remains as it is. Or you can just do this minus, open bracket, a 0 there, plus 2 you're going to obtain a 2 there. So y is equal to 2, all right? But remember, this is on a condition where we have x and y, and our x at this moment is what? 0. So x is 0 when y is 2 like this. So this is our y intercept. So remember, our condition here is to draw or to sketch. Now I have got the x intercept, I have got the y intercept. What am I going to do? I'm going to take this now into my sketch. So this is going to be my sketch here. Just draw the x and y axis, all right? So this is your sketch, all right? Oh, you're doing this on your graph there. You make sure that you've got a proper scale. So this is 0, just write 1, 2, 3, depending with the scale that you're given, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus three one two three all right we've got something like this all right remember from the graph this is zero these are positive positive in terms of x positive in terms of y negative in terms of y negative in terms of x all right so we said we need the x intercept in this case that's the first point x intercept and remember i said x intercept it's a point which lies in the x-axis. So x, remember, x-intercept, it lies in the x-axis. So which means this point lies in the x-axis and it lies at a point where x is equal to 2, where x is equal to 2, and this 2, it's a positive. So you're going to mark a point in the x-axis here. This is your x-axis, where x is equal to 2. This is the point, you mark the point where x is equal to 2, all right? You move on to the y-intercept. The y-intercept is where y is equal to 2, which is 0, 2 here, where y is equal to 2. 
so you mark a point in this this is your y-axis where y is equal to 2 that is this point you mark a point there then simply with these two points i can draw a line just simple like that guys with these two points a line can be drawn and this line is the one of y is equal to y is equal to minus x plus 2 you just write down the equation of what of the line so that's how you actually sketch there if you are given a condition to draw a straight line so you'll be given a graph paper actually an exam uh, that you're going to have so you just make sure that you put according to scale like what i'm doing each box you write one two three and so forth then from that box you mark the x and y intercept then you are done guys that's that's the option there so there's nothing much actually as we can see then someone is uh, might be asking what about this one which is written as which was on number c there on number one c which is x is equal to two how am i going to draw such type of a line all right for anything guys where you are given an equation like as you can see we do not have the value of y there it's just x this is a line okay let me explain with a cartesian plane i hope you're going to understand me i'm going to put another example here all right so this is x here and we've got y like this okay so the line of x is equal to 2 it's also a straight line this one but you are going to draw this line at a point where x is equal to 2 so you've got maybe a scale like this uh, minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 so you've got 1 2 3 and so forth okay so we are going to draw this line where x is equal to 2 okay if you are to cross here guys i want you to see something which is um, maybe you can understand much better if you consider this part that i discussed i want you to see something you saw that um in the x x in the y axis here this it's a vertical line and its x is equal to zero so which means all these vertical lines like this their equation is x is equal to a certain number when a line is horizontal like this it's y is equal to a certain number again so in this case this is supposed to be a vertical line which passes where x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 2 at this point all right so you just draw a vertical line at that point x is equal to 2 like this so this is the line of x is equal to 2 simple like that all right so it can be uh, maybe y is equal to negative 3 still one and the same thing you're going to have your Cartesian plane this time let me just do a sketch all right something like this you've got a Cartesian plane that's your x-axis that's your y-axis so you've got a 0 1 2 and so forth minus 1 minus 2 uh, 1 2 3 negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 negative 4 negative 5 like that all right so where y is equal to minus 3 which means you are referring to the y-axis this is your y-axis and y is equal to 3 at this point so you're going to draw a horizontal line here at y is equal to minus 3 like that so that's how you draw these lines so this is y is equal to minus 3 so it can be x is equal to 5 x is equal to minus 1 any anything that you can be given but when you are given a straight line these are the important things that you're actually that you actually need to know about a straight line so we shall talk more a combination now of a straight line and the other type of a graph which is a parabola that they actually need you to know which is a quadratic graph or a parabola so we shall talk about in our next class so that you'll be able to answer the questions now from past exam papers see how they ask this question because normally they ask these questions on a single question a straight line graph and a quadratic graph on a single question so you must be able to know how to relate the two so that's it guys for me on african motives uh, working on maths n2 so if there are any areas of assistance that we actually need to work on let's meet on the comment section so that we can know 
how to tackle the areas uh, in the time frame that we have uh, as we prepare ourselves for the exams which are ahead of time. So that's it guys, till we meet again.